After the release of Resident Evil HD Remaster in 2015, Capcom have given similar treatment to Resident Evil Zero, so finally PAL regions now have a physical release of both games on a double pack known as Resident Evil Origins Collection. So let's follow the canon of the games and start with Resident Evil Zero, that started its life out on the Nintendo 64. Announced at E3 in 1999, this is the prequel to the 1996 original, offering a new beginning to the Resident Evil franchise, focusing on events leading up to the Spencer Mansion incident, from the perspective of Star's Bravo team member, Rebecca Chambers. The game featured the ability to swap between playable characters Rebecca and newcomer Billy Cohen, a fugitive on the run. This was possible with the N64 because of its use of the cartridges, allowing for no load times while jumping from character to character. During development Capcom decided to carry the game over to the Nintendo GameCube. Even though the new Nintendo GameCube hardware was disbased, the two character mechanic remained intact due to the way the GameCube constantly streams data from the disc and does not load in sections like other video game consoles do. The early prototype footage of the N64 version sees Rebecca investigating the train and what has happened there. This part of the game was finished and is pretty much where the GameCube version starts off, with a few changes here and there. So years later we now have the HD version for PS4, the definitive version of the game and a good way to dive back into this survival horror classic. Firstly the story and how elements in the prequel kind of contradict characters behaviours in later entries. For example, Rebecca even though she is quite clearly a bit green, at the start of the game she quickly finds her feet and then Billy, and then proceeds to kick some zombie and monster butt. This doesn't quite gel with her scared rookie act in Resident Evil 1. From taking out a giant slug monster in Zero, to having to get rescued by Chris just from a hunter in the very next game. So there are some Star Wars prequel-ish style gaps in the narrative. But if you want more classic Resident Evil, I guess we can overlook an issue that's synonymous with most prequels in any media. There are plenty of awesome moments in this game though to balance this out. The puzzles that use the two character dynamic feel very well thought out, and once the plot gets off its feet it does dive deeper into the lore of the Resident Evil universe and expand the mythos, and the new weapons that they added are a total blast to use. And now let's address the elephant in the room. I love getting to a save room in Resident Evil. The calming score washing over you as you realise you can save your game and free up some slots in your inventory just by sauntering over to the trusty item box. Yeah, there are no item boxes in this game. This is my main bugbear with Resident Evil Zero. You have to leave items on the floor on the fly. Using the system kind of ends up bittersweet. Allow me to elaborate. You and Billy have six slots in your inventory each. That's twice as much as Chris from the original game, so you'd think it'd be okay. But considering both characters have to carry weapons, ammo, healing items and the like, this all leads to constantly sorting out what items to take and which to leave in which room to leave them in. This ends up artificially lengthening the game for all the time you spend managing your inventory. But anyways, about it being bittersweet, there are a few positives to the system. You can mix herbs that you don't have room for on the fly, and of course you can drop items for more key items. This is one thing that you will miss when you end up picking back up a more traditional Resident Evil game, the ability to just drop something when you need to pick something else up. If you have fond memories of Resident Evil on the GameCube, you'll definitely enjoy playing through it again in HD. Capcom have packed it in with a few extras as well with alternative costumes for Billy and Rebecca and some extra modes. In summary, Resident Evil Zero is a fan entry into the franchise. It tries to innovate but still keeps enough of that classic Resident Evil formula that it is known for, to be up there with the likes of Resident Evil 2 and Code Veronica. So on to Resident Evil Remake HD Remaster then. This is the remake of the 1996 Resident Evil game that hit GameCube in 2002. I remember playing this for the first time and beholding the graphics as something I'd never seen up to this point, it's truly pushing the hardware limitations of the GameCube straight off the bat. Even today this game looks spectacular on the GameCube, and the HD re-release looks marginally better, 
but really just serves to the fact that most people are using HD TVs now. But if you have a GameCube or a Wii and play this 2002 version on a CRT television, it still holds up as the finest example of a game that managed to blend 3D models in with pre-rendered backgrounds to fully immerse the player in the world that they inhabit. Playing as either Jill or Chris to unravel the mysteries of Umbrella, traversing deadly traps, monsters and zombies, if you have played the original you will feel right at home with the remake. Just the right amount has been changed up from the original game concerning puzzles and gameplay for the returning players. Mixing up with new puzzle items such as the death masks, a set of items to collect and forcing the player to wander the mansion even more this calm. Showcasing that zombies can now burst through doors and ramping up the tension when backtracking. And when that door handle breaks and you finally encounter a crimson head, the new monster that they've added to the series. This time around if you don't burn any of the zombies that you kill, with the kerosene in the lighter they will come back as super fast crimson head zombies. This in turn promotes a more survival tactical element to the game. Players may opt to run past zombies and have to think carefully if they do dispatch them if it's worth using up the kerosene to burn the bodies and if it is so, probably because the crimson head might pop up on a more critical path during the game's backtracking which may prove problematic in the future. This is where the game gets so much right. The level design in this game is almost perfect. Everything from the tank controls to the fixed camera angles serve to make the player feel vulnerable. Coupling this with how excellent the visuals are, this game emotes so much atmosphere. Speaking of atmosphere, Remake has included the Lisa Trevor subplot woven into the story of Resident Evil 1. That adds a whole new freaky element to the game. The disturbing Chainsaw Massacre style visuals you will find when compared to the original offer a new dynamic horror to the game. Not just a bio threat this time, but now a more ghoulish atmospheric and almost supernatural element to the game. Resident Evil Remake, from a story, gameplay and technical perspective, is the pinnacle of the franchise. The likes of Resident Evil 2 may have best cemented how good a survival horror game could be. As for Remake, this game takes everything that was good about all past entries of the series and polishes them to a gleaming shine. Not only is Resident Evil Remake one of the best Resident Evil games of all time, it stands to reason that this is probably one of the best games of all time. At the very least it has a place in my personal top 10. Thanks for watching and farewell.